In the previous video, we derived the notion of an integral of a two form. Now we want to do a couple of examples. So let's look at the ingredients for our setup. So we have omega, which is a differential two form. Then we have a smooth function phi from d into rn, where d is a subset of r2. And we think of that as a parameterization of a two surface, in other words, a two dimensional surface inside of rn, which is an n dimensional space. And so we have this kind of picture over here. Over here in the UV plane, I have my two dimensional region D, which is being mapped into this two dimensional surface happening in this case in R3 because it's kind of hard to draw anything bigger. But in general, this can happen in RN. And then next, the integral over S of this differential two form was derived to be the double integral over D of this three-stage evaluation of the two form. So the first thing that you do is you plug in a point from Rn, and that point is given by phi of uv, so that puts the differential form onto the surface, and then you evaluate it at two vectors which are tangent to the surface. So here you have the partial of phi with respect to u and the far partial of phi with respect to v. And that's just a standard double integral like from calculus three. And then let's recall that two forms are built out of these wedge product things, and those are defined in the following way. So we have dx i wedge dx j. So that takes as an input two vectors, and an output would be just a number. And what you get is the determinant of the matrix whose first row is made up of the first vector and the i and j component of that first vector and the second row is made up of the i and the j component of that second vector. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our first example. So we wanna consider this two form, omega, which is x times y dx wedge dy plus x squared dx wedge dz. So this is happening in R3. And then our surface, phi of uv, is defined by this parameterization. So the x component is u, the y component is v, and then the z component is u squared plus v squared. So this is actually a paraboloid. It's actually the surface z equals x squared plus y squared. And then our region D is given by the unit disk. In other words, it's all points uv such that u squared plus v squared is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and get at it. So maybe I will on its own evaluate this thing just to get an idea of what's going on. So here we wanna take omega evaluated at a point on the surface, so that's phi of u v, and then further evaluated at two vectors that are tangent to the surface. And in this case, there you can think of them like as vector fields. So here we have partial phi with respect to u, partial phi with respect to v. Okay, so let's see what we get when we do that. So that's going to be um, omega evaluated at the point u, v, u squared plus v squared. In other words, everywhere I see x, I'm going to stick u. Everywhere I see y, I'm going to stick v. And everywhere I see z, I'm going to stick u squared plus v squared. And then my final evaluation will be at these two vectors, really vector fields defined by these derivatives. So the partial of phi with respect to u will give us 1, 0, 2u. And then the partial of phi with respect to v will give us 0, 1, 2v. Okay, fantastic. And now we're ready to go. So we're going to insert everything into here. Everywhere we see an x, we'll put a u, and so on and so forth, like we described before. So this first term right here, maybe I'll underline that in yellow will become u times v, so that's the x times y. And now we have dx wedge dy evaluated at these two vectors. So that's 1, 0, 2u, comma, 0, 1, comma, 2v. And we'll evaluate that in just a second. Okay, great. And then, so maybe we'll underline this in yellow to see that it matches up with that up there. And then let's maybe underline this one in green. So we have plus u squared, and then we have dx wedge dz, and then the same two vectors. So we're going to have uh, 1, 0, 2u, comma, 0, 1, comma, 2v. Great. 
And now we can get to using this definition for how this wedge of dxi and dxj acts on these two vectors. And that is by a determinant. So let's see what we get here. We get u times v. And then we'll have the determinant of the matrix made by these two vectors taking the first component and the second component. And that's because we have the x component and the y component here. So in other words, we have the determinant of the matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. So that's actually pretty simple in this case. And then we have plus u squared, and then the determinant of the matrix that we get by taking the first and the third components, and that's because we have dx and dz there. So that's going to be 1, 2u, and then 0, 2v. Great. Now let's see what we get. So the determinant of this identity matrix is just 1. So you get u times v plus, and then the determinant of this will be 2v. So I'll rewrite that as 2u squared times v. So if you recall from a previous video, this is the kind of thing that we should get. After we fully evaluate a differential form at a point and then at two vector fields, we should get a function, and that's exactly what we did. So let's just look at what we have on the extreme left-hand side and what we have on the extreme right-hand side, and then revisit our formula and notice that the integral of our differential form will be exactly the integral of this function. So I'll go ahead and clean up the board and then we'll pick up there. Okay, so on the last board, we got down to this point. So the integral of our differential two form over the surface that we defined will be given by the double integral over d, where that was the region parametrizing our surface of u times v plus 2u squared v, and where d, like I said before, is the unit disk. And so the fact that that is a unit disk, which is really circular, really screams out that we should probably be using polar coordinates here. So let's just recall how we use polar coordinates. So we'll let u equal r cos theta. We'll let v equal r sine theta. And then our differential area component in polar coordinates is r dr d theta. Great. And so that is going to tell us how to transform this into a double integral involving polar coordinates. So let's go ahead and write that down. So now we have this double integral. We have u times v. So that's going to be r squared sine theta cosine theta. And then plus 2u squared v. So that's going to be plus 2r cubed uh, cosine squared theta sine theta. And then finally, my differential area component, which is r dr d theta. So r dr d theta. Great. And now let's talk about our bounds of integration. So since we're inside the unit disk, the furthest we get away from the origin is 1. And so our r value goes from 0 to 1. And then since we're taking the entire unit disk, we need all of the theta values. In other words, 0 to 2 pi. OK. So now what we want to do is maybe distribute this r through and then get to going on this iterated integral. So here we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi, then the integral from 0 to 1. I'll distribute that r through. That's going to give me r cubed sine theta cosine theta plus 2r to the fourth cosine squared theta sine theta. Finally, dr d theta. So my first stage will be to take the antiderivative of this with respect to r. So let's see what that gives us. That'll give me the integral from 0 to 2 pi, because I'm not touching the antiderivative with respect to theta yet. And then I have 1 quarter r to the fourth. And then I still have sine theta, cosine theta. And then plus 2 fifths r to the fifth and then cos squared theta, sine theta, and then finally I have a d theta around that whole thing. And then, since I've just taken my antiderivative, I need to evaluate this at r equals 0 and r equals 1. Okay, so notice the effect that that will have is we can just plug in r for 1, and so that's going to have the same effect of just erasing those r's, because when we evaluate that at 1, obviously multiplying by 1 is 1, and then multiplying 
anything by zero will cancel everything out. So that's the same thing that we get there. We can just scrub this away and we've done the evaluation. Okay, so I'll go ahead and bring this up here and we'll finish it off. Now we've worked this down to a single integral. We've got the integral from zero to two pi of one quarter sine times cosine plus two fifths cosine squared times sine. Now I can factor a sine out of that and that really sets me up with a u substitution. So let's go ahead and do that. Integral from zero to two pi. And now I have one quarter cosine theta plus two fifths cosine squared theta and then times sine theta d theta. Great. Now what I want to notice, if I let u equal cosine theta, then du equals minus sine theta d theta. But that tells me that this bit right here can be replaced with du. And then here we have this is u and this is u squared. Oh, and I should have said that is minus du. So I'm going to go ahead and take that minus sign out of the front. So I have minus then the integral of one quarter u plus two fifths u squared du. Now let's look at the bounds of integration. When theta is equal to zero, u will be equal to one. And then when theta is two pi, u will also be equal to one. So I've got the integral from one to one. But that's an integral over a single point, And so that's gonna give us zero. Good. And so that's the end of this first example. I'll go ahead and clean up the board and we'll look at one more. For our second example, we'll consider the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals one with z value between zero and two. So that is a two dimensional surface that's happening within a three dimensional space. Then our differential two form will be given by y times z dx wedge dy plus z over x dy wedge dz. Okay, so I haven't parameterized this surface, and so let's get to doing that first. And we will do that by using inspiration from cylindrical coordinates. So recall that in cylindrical coordinates, we have variables r, theta, and z. It's really polar coordinates plus the z axis. But in this case, we wanna fix the radius equal to one. So setting that radius equal to one, the only variables of my parameterization are theta and z. Great. Now the x component of that parameterization generally would be r cosine theta if we're using cylindrical coordinates. But like I said, radius is one, so we have cosine theta here. And then similarly, we have sine theta there and z there. And then here we have theta is running between zero and two pi, and z is running between zero and two. And so that is a rectangle in the theta z plane. Okay, so now let's go ahead and calculate this object. So here we need omega phi theta z. So notice my variables here are theta z instead of u, v, but that, that's fine. And then we have uh, d phi d theta, d phi dz. Great. Now let's see what we get for all of those parts. So this is gonna be omega evaluated at the point on the surface, so in other words, we're evaluating it at cosine theta, sine theta, z, and then we're further evaluating it at these two vector fields given by the derivative of that parameterization. So here we have the derivative with respect to phi, so that'll give us minus sine theta, cosine theta, zero, and then next, the derivative of each of those parts with respect to z. So that'll give us 0, 0, 1. Great. Now what we want to do is everywhere we see x in this equation, we'll plug cosine theta. Everywhere we see y, sine theta. And everywhere we see z, we'll plug z. And then we'll use, again, this rule about the wedge product of dxi wedge dxj on vector fields. So let's see what we get there. So we'll have y z, so that is going to be z times sine theta. And then we have dx wedge dy acting on the pair of vectors that's over there. So that's the same. So this is minus sine theta, cosine theta, zero comma zero zero one. Great. And then we have x, sorry, z over x. So that's gonna be plus z over cosine theta. 
again, evaluated those two vectors. So we have minus sine theta, cosine theta, zero, comma, zero, zero, one. Great. Now, this dx wedge dy means we're going to take the determinant of the matrix formed by the first two entries of these vectors. So here we get z times sine theta, and then the determinant of the matrix minus sine theta, cosine theta, 0, 0. Okay, good. And then plus z over cos theta, and then we have the determinant of the matrix formed by, oh, and I just realized I left out my d y wedge dz here. So the determinant of the matrix formed by the last two entries of those vectors. So that's going to give us cos theta 0, 0, 1. Okay, so this guy has a determinant of 0, so that's not too hard to see. And so that's just going to give us z over cosine theta times the determinant of this matrix. But the determinant of that matrix is just cosine theta. So that's just going to give us z. So we get a function just as expected when we fully evaluate our differential two form. Okay, I'll clean this up and then we'll get to evaluating the integral. So let's recall that our surface integral over this two form was derived to be this double integral over the region D of omega being evaluated on the surface and then at the two vector fields to the surface. And we calculated that on the last board to be equal to that double integral over D, where D is described by this rectangle in the theta Z plane, and then just the function Z. That's what this guy ended up being, just Z. So in other words, we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 2 of Z dZ d theta. But now since that's a product of two one variable functions, the function with respect to theta is trivial. It's just the number one. We can factor this into the integral from 0 to 2 pi of d theta times the integral from 0 to 2 of z dz. And now we're pretty much good to go. This is going to give us 2 pi times z squared over 2 being evaluated from 0 to 2. So notice some 2's cancel in the denominator, and then we end up with 4 times pi. So that's the surface integral, or sorry, I should say that's the integral of this two form over this surface. And that's a good place to stop.